right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the parish, Friday nights. My name is Corinne Ernie. I'm the Deputy Director of Curatorial Affairs here at the parish. And it's a great pleasure to welcome Jose Campos here. He also goes by the name of uh, Studio Lenka. His exhibition, uh, Chisme, which is all the vibrant woodcut figures in the center of the museum, are uh, currently on view um, for a couple of months. And after his presentation, we're actually gonna go into the gallery and he has some things thought out to do with all of you. Because he's been here for a few days now and he's worked with our education team and uh, various students and migrant workers and different groups from the community. Uh, and he did some wonderful workshops. Um, so it's really amazing to have him here. I'll give you a little bit of background about Jose before he does his presentation. He was, in, he was born in La Paz, El Salvador, and he was among the many who fled the country during its violent civil war in the late 1980s. He traveled illegally with his mother to the US by land and grew up in the gaze of a strictly conservative administration as an illegal alien. He's currently based in London. Studio Lenka is his working name. Studio refers to a space for experimentation and constantly shifting place. And Lenka is the name of his ancestors from El Salvador. So Jose is focused on ideas surrounding difference, knowledge, and visibility. Working in the areas of performance, video, painting, and sculpture, his process starts with personal memories underpinned by social activism and different forms of praxis. I would also like to acknowledge and thank um, Mario Cadofrech, who gifted Chisme to the Parish Art Museum. So thank you, Mario. You're here with us tonight, so it's wonderful. Um, Mario is the founder of Yes Contemporary, whose mission is to create opportunities for outstanding El Salvadoran contemporary artists within and outside of El Salvador. So it's a wonderful beginning of a partnership. I also want to thank our Friday night sponsors, uh, Wild Cornell Medicine in Southampton and the Corcoran Group. And now I would like to invite Jose to do his presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you for being here. Um, I'm really excited to be at the Parish Art Museum. Thank you very much to YES for facilitating this. I thought I'd start by um, sharing some context uh, about my work. Um, so I'm just gonna flick through some images and discuss them, and then we'll go into the space and have a look at the actual installation. So my background is in education. Um, I was an art teacher in Southeast London, which is a very sort of diverse area. And uh, I'm, I'm really interested in critical pedagogy. So this was a work that I made alongside students um, at the Horneman Museum. And the idea was um, that we would sort of highlight the fact that some spaces and institutions are difficult to navigate. These, these students were surrounding the museum but actually they had never been to this particular museum. Um, so <laughs> what we did was we filled the space with um, black elastic, creating a web, making it difficult for the um, gallery goers, the museum goers, um, for it to be difficult. Um, and the, the, the result was really sort of powerful. They were using their bodies very similar to the work that we're doing here at the parish to sort of make a statement about access. Um, I studied at Goldsmiths University in London and um, this was an installation that I created based on Salvadoran uh, pottery. The, the vessels are made out of paper and the idea was that the, the vessels were sort of um, symbols of culture. They're the, they're the things that remain when cultures disappear. So I invited the audiences um, to break them down. Um, and you can see um, here, for example, this black vessel here, that it's been sort of um, picked away at. And it was sort of this erasure of this uh, culture.
Um, I wanted to talk about my practice as one that's in conversation with my family. So this is a video that my mother sent me on WhatsApp. And I think that it's really important to share because a lot of the traditions in El Salvador are very oral. So they're passed down through stories um, and images. Um, here, she, she's just sending me a video of these folkloric dancers that appeared in front of my aunt's house. And um, what they do is they go around the different houses, um, perform, and then ask for money to sort of maintain their practice. I think that video also for me talks about um, a hierarchy of knowledge, um, just sort of like uh, ways of researching, you know, it, this isn't an academic text. Um, this is, you know, footage shot on a phone and passed through WhatsApp. That prompted me to create portraits based on Los Historiantes, which were the folkloric dancers. And they draw their inspiration from religion, Catholicism, um, agriculture, so you, you may have seen that they were carrying machetes, um, and also Mesoamerican influences. And I live in London, so I was going to the National Portrait Gallery a lot, and I wanted to position these dancers as if they were portraits in the National Portrait Gallery. Um, so you can see here the similarities. Um, I then had the opportunity to work with the Serpentine Gallery and the Photographer's Gallery, um, which are two um, contemporary art galleries in London. And we actually created a fake website where we took the home screens of different public institutions like the Victoria and Albert Museum, the British Museum, the National Portrait Gallery, um, and we placed these portraits on top of those home pages to highlight the fact that they were sort of missing from these public institutions. And in the middle um, is one of my relatives roasting chocolate. Um, it's something that she does every time I visit her. So this brings me to the installation that's in the double wide galleries. Um, it's an installation that is comprised of 15 figures, and they're made out of wood, acrylic paint, household paint, oil paint, um, and on the backs there are graphite uh, drawings. And those drawings are sort of uh, a collaboration with a union in South Florida that's uh, called We Count. Um, I'll explain a little bit about that in just a moment. But um, I also think that the, the way that the sculptures are placed in the space is really great because it sort of mimics the landscape just outside of the building. Um, when I first came in, it was very much like, uh, like a field or a garden. Um, so good job, Parish Art Museum. So this is We Count. Um, I made the figures during a residency at Fountainhead, which is a residency program for artists in Miami. And I was there during the month of November. And um, if you've ever been to Art Basel um, during November in Miami, um, there's a sense of um, Miami becoming this sort of hub for art and power and wealth. And um, 
in the same space are these uh, sorts of unions uh, fighting for basic human rights. Um, these, these are some of the participants from the workshops. Um, this participant here with her baby girl um, was from uh, Guatemala and she didn't speak Spanish. She actually spoke MAM, uh, M-A-M, which is an indigenous language of uh, Guatemala. And um, she actually wrote that into the figure. And I think that's really brilliant because that is now included in, in this narrative in this institution. Um, the way I worked with the participants was we spoke about this phrase um, that a Greek poet wrote, and it's, what didn't you do to bury me, but you forgot that I was a seed? That, that was appropriated um, during protests, um, protests specifically in 2014 for the Iguala mass kidnapping in Mexico. And also during um, the Trump administration's approach to um, illegal border crossings and the separation of children uh, from their families. And it's been sort of more widely used in different contexts. Um, and I think social media has actually helped to sort of spread that. So we started to think about illustrating things that grow, like seeds and plants and flowers. And I think that's really powerful because it um, positions nature as a powerful force, but also uh, people that go through injustice as the bearers of justice over time. Um, here are some more participants. He was very not into drawing. <laughs> but in the end, I couldn't like, get him away from the figure. He absolutely loved it. So here he is, and then he's there in the back, like super focused, working. It was great being um, at We Count because it wasn't an art space, it was a, a, a small sort of like rundown union office next to a, a makeshift radio station. And they brought out chairs and coffee and food and there was kids running around. And it just made me think that if we want things to be different, we have to do things differently. Um, and that brings me to some of the work that we've been doing here with the education department. I've been here since Tuesday, and I want to thank the engagement education department. They've been absolutely brilliant. Um, we've gone into the space with different groups, uh, school groups, um, Parkinson's, um, we worked with migrant workers, um, so a real range of, of people. Here, I asked the, the participants to, we were sort of moving around in the space like a flock of birds, and the idea was, uh, was that we were sort of behaving in a way that we shouldn't in that space, because um, sometimes when you enter museums or galleries, all of a sudden, we're walking slower, we're lowering our voice. We have our hands behind our back. I definitely do that. <laughs> so these are some of the participants. And I think what's happening here is actually that they're extending the sense of collaboration with the work. And it's becoming a site-specific work. Um, so the more participants that we have, the, the, the bigger the sort of garden grows.
This was a, a Latino club at a nearby school. Um, these students didn't speak English, um, but they sort of made their work using their own languages. I, I believe this was the Alzheimer's group, yeah. So the participants made pinwheels, and um, that was sort of inspired by the phrase, they tried to bury us, but they didn't know we were seeds. So we thought we'd make these sort of sculptures that look like flowers. Um, but also there's a sort of aesthetic quality to them that is linked back to fairs in El Salvador, um, the cutouts, you know, it's something you might find at a festival that you might take a picture with. So it's this idea of sort of what's included, what's not included. That's from last night, yes. They didn't want to leave, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, w one thing about the curation before we go and, and see it, well, that space, is that it's, that space sort of slices into the middle of this building. And um, you, you kind of happen across this, this group of figures rather than entering a gallery and choosing to look at them. You almost become the outsider. Um, and it's called chisme because chisme in Spanish slang means gossip. So it's this sort of conversation that's happening that we are then privy to. That's Wendy in the middle there. She's, she's great. <laughs> Um, and because I'm leaving in a few days on Sunday, I wanted to just share with you what my next project is, just very briefly. Um, it's a project called Border Vessels, and I'm working with a ceramic studio in Texas, um, right along the border um, between Mexico and the United States. And I've asked them to um, dig up clay from the Rio Grande, which is called Rio Bravo in Mexico. Um, and it, um, so here you can see an image of um, Andy collecting clay from the river um, just across from Mexico. I'll show you a video just briefly. He's had to tie himself because he doesn't want to fall into the river. So um, he will be digging up clay and um, turning it into a useful material. It's, um, it's a very long process, and I'm really sort of fortunate to work with them because um, they have a lot of um, knowledge about sourcing natural clays. Um, so they, they taught me that nopal, cactus, um, aloe vera are useful in mixing into the clay um, to create elasticity. And this clay is actually going to be um, turned into vessels, uh, like the vessels that I showed you earlier. And those vessels are going to be returned to El Salvador. Uh, I guess the sort of metaphor for migration in reverse. OK. I think I'm done. <laughs> Thank you.
<laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, so um, it's kind of my signature. I, I, I always say if I was wearing that hat with that pattern, everyone would be looking at me. And um, these figures are about being highly visible. So the colors are rich and bold. Uh, the, 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 the gaze of the figure is looking straight at you. It's an invitation to look at them. And that is the opposite of the sometimes undocumented experience. You have to hide, you have to be invisible. Um, so these physically take up space and, you know, um, they're, they're larger than life, really. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any other questions? I mean, we can chat in the galleries as well. So, yeah. Thank you.